Hey there! Under my very unofficial scout here, I have what possibly could be the coolest unofficial scout knife ever. I know that's a big bold claim and probably could be debated well with a lot of other great knives, but as far as the fun factor goes, on a scale of 1 to 10, well, this is an 11. Before I reveal it, uh, I owe another knife uh, a little apology. Um, I recently did a video on Remington Knives, the book Remington Knives Past and Present, and at the end of that I put down all of my vintage Remington knives. I also did a video recently on my unofficial scout knives and put down my unofficial scout knives at the end of that video. And this knife really should have been in both of the groups. I don't know why it wasn't. I think it was just in my pocket that day because I do love to carry it. This is an unofficial Remington Scout knife, probably one of their first, with the uh, Acorn Shield, early 1920s. And as you can see here, I've modified it. It came to me with no back scale and a broken front scale, half of it missing. So I replaced those broken bone scales with custom Bobinga ones, hid the rivets, did away with the bale, and uh, put the shield back in. Um, so I've modified the knife, but it's a really cool knife. This is the first knife like this that I ever completely tore down uh, to refurbish and put back together. And um, uh, it's just a great little knife. Uh, while I'm on the subject of modified knives, let me tell you a little cautionary tale, something that just recently happened to me. I bought a Scout knife online, and when it came, I started looking at the tang stamp and it just didn't look right. So I have similar knives and I compared a Tang stamp from the same maker on a knife, a same model, just a little before that and just a little after that, two of them. And the Tang stamps just didn't look the same. The knife I had bought, the font was not the same and the size was not the same. Um, so the tell really was, you could see where the uh, corrosion and pitting had come down on the blade to the Tang. and The Tang was um, ground smooth. And uh, so, so what somebody had done is they had ground off the old tank stamp and stamped on a new one. Now I had read about that, but I'd never really fallen victim to that before. So I got stung by that. Um, and the reason I'm not naming names, showing the knife, or naming the seller is because, you know, there's an outside chance I could be wrong. The greater possibility is the seller just didn't know. So I asked to return the knife, and they're very graciously taking it back and giving me my money back, um, but it's a little scary. Um, I just never thought anybody would go to all that trouble uh, on a $50 knife, a knife that I could buy for $50. But somewhere back along the way, somebody blatantly counterfeited that knife. I guess it was worth it to them to go to all that trouble. So um, yeah, you gotta be careful out there. Okay, so the possibly the coolest unofficial scout knife or any kind of scout knife in my humble opinion is the LFNC Universal Boy Trooper the Landers Frary and Clark Trooper look at that badge is that not the coolest scout knife badge you have ever seen that is just so great and this is just a great knife all around we're going to go through it here in a minute. Before we do, I'm going to tell you a little bit about Landers, Frary, and Clark Universal. Uh, while I talk about them, I'll put up images from their 1869 catalog, so you can be looking at those. But Landers, Frary, and Clark was formed all the way back in 1862 when the firm of Landers and Smith purchased the firm of Frary and Carey. <laughs> so um, it was George Landers and James Frary, he was the president, and who was Clark? Well, it turns out he was just the attorney. So that firm was in existence from 1862 all the way up to 1965. Um, in 1866, they began cutlery production when they purchased Meridian Cutlery Company, and then they started selling tableware. They inter instituted their Etna Knife Works. Um, in 1909, they purchased the Universal Trademark, so that's where that comes in. And they made a lot of stuff, but mostly what they made was products to make life easier for the American housewife. Things like food grinders, bread makers, coffee percolators, cake mixers, and again, tableware. Um, then with the advent of electricity, and it's kind of funny to think, you know, that this was before elect electricity, some of it. Um, but then they put into production an electric iron, 
a uh, toaster, you know, um, vacuum cleaners, washing machines, ranges, things like that. And these things were sold all over the world. Their slogan, as a matter of fact, was the trademark known in every home. So I wasn't familiar with Universal, but I guess some of you that may be antiquers or pickers, maybe you know Universal, LF and C very well from uh, their appliances and their contraptions for the kitchen. So they didn't start making pocket knives until 1912 when they purchased Hummison and Beckley Manufacturing, also of New Britain, Connecticut. Um, they were out of Landers, Freer, and Clark were out of New Britain, Connecticut. And they started making pocket knives and razors. They made those from 1912 to 1950 because in 1950, the cutlery division closed. And then in 1965, they sold everything else to GE. And that was the end of Landers, Freire, and Clark. Okay, so let's take a look at this knife. We've already looked at the shield. Um, it's nickel silver, nickel silver bolsters, uh, a detachable bail. It's three and a half inches, you know, equal, uh, equal end, four bladed utility knife or camp or scout knife. It, this one does have brass liners and a brass spacer, carbon steel springs and tools and blade. Um, the interesting thing really are the covers. Um, these are not bone and they're not plastic. They kind of lie in between because what these are are what they call perfected stag. And what they did was they ground stag horn and uh, in with an acetate binding in celluloid. Now I'm not a chemist so that doesn't make a lot of sense to me but apparently what it is it's it's a stag horn ground into celluloid and it works really well. This is the third one of these I've had and every single one of them have been uncracked, unchipped, unshrunken, <laughs> not warped. So while celluloid um, was fragile and unstable, this perfected stag of LF and C's worked out really well. The greatest thing about this knife is there are half stops on every tool which uh, was just a surprise to me, a really, a real delightful surprise. Here's the can opener. It reminds me a lot of that British style can opener you see on the case camp knives pre seventies. And um, also, you know, the Rough Rider camp knife that imitates those. And it's just kind of a blade. It's very sharp. I gotta be careful opening it. Uh, you can see here, it's got a, a nice bevel and it's got a sharpened edge and it has just kind of a welded on little thumb stud. And so I guess you would just open a can the best you could with that. But what I like about the style of this kind of can opener is that you could do a lot of other things with it. It would also act, you know, as a scraper, a small blade, a scorer, and things like that. Here's the screwdriver cap lifter, a short style, again, half stop. Just listen to that snap. Uh, this knife is from the late 1920s or 30s. We'll talk about that in a little minute, in a, in a little while, excuse me. Um, but the blades are tight, the springs are strong. It's really quite amazing. Here's the punch, half stop, nice snap. Uh, it does have a tank stamp, L, F, and C. And uh, underneath USA. And you'll see that again on the main blade. Here's a look at the back of it and the front. It's completely full. You've got the factory rounded edge on there or tip. There's a little cutout right here in the cover and scale to get to it. Ow. <laughs> uh, and then what does that leave? The main blade. It's a spear point blade. It's got a crescent nail pull, a uh, nick rather, and a half stop. Here's the tank stamp on the main blade, Elephant C USA. And the model number is on the back. I believe that's 03862. But here's the best thing. The blade edge is intact. And it reads Universal Boy Trooper. There's the image of the trooper again. Isn't that great? I just love that. Now because of that etch, I didn't uh, polish this blade, I just very gently cleaned it. And um, it came to me with a good edge. It's not the sharpest in the world, but it's a, a clean edge, there's no nicks or chips. So 
I won't have to sharpen it anymore and take off any more material. This particular knife is shown in Ed Holbrook's book, Official Scout Blades. It is on page uh, 27 of that book in the um, unofficial knives section, and here it is. He has it down as the uh, LF and C Trooper, three and a half inches, circa 1930s. You'll notice this knife has line bolsters. And many of them that I've seen in pictures online and things have uh, line bolsters, but mine does not. And also I noticed that the one featured in a 1926 catalog does not have line bolsters. I'll put those images in right now. So I'm thinking maybe this knife might be one of the very first models or variations uh, dating from the late 20s. The tang stamps on LFNC pocket knives don't really help us date them much because they used a couple of different tang stamps and they used them all uh, from 1912 to 1950. Now LFNC did also make official Boy Scout knives. Uh, this would be their unofficial Boy Scout knife, obviously, but um, they made a three and three quarter inch full size model, which I have. They made a very similar to this uh, 3 and 3 8 model, and they made a 3 and a half inch model on the same frame as this knife, but it was a three-bladed knife. Um, it also had a detachable bale, but it had a older style can opener uh, on the opposite end and a uh, longer screwdriver uh, on the opposite end. But these knives are they're similar in a lot of ways and they're different in some. So first of all you can see the shields are very similar in shape and close in size. Uh, they both have the perfected stag covers. The full-size official scout knife has an attached bale and line bolsters. It's all nickel silver whereas the unofficial knife has brass. And then there's, again, a difference in the tools. Um, no half stops on the official Boy Scout knife. And a very long uh, screwdriver on the main blade end, half stop short screwdriver on the bail end on the unofficial knife. And then the can openers are very different. Here you have the older style can opener, and here you have a blade style can opener again on the other end. So some of the differences there. They made official scout knives from 1931 to 1939. So thank you for taking a look at my LFNC unofficial boy trooper scout knife and learning a little bit about LFNC Universal. These are just great knives. They're really well built. They're seriously underrated. Um, if you're looking for a vintage scout knife, uh, if you come across one of these, I would recommend buying it. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. So thanks for watching and have fun collecting.